Welcome to the Homeschool Show from North Carolinians for Home Education, where our goal is to help you homeschool with confidence and joy. I'm your host, Matthew McDill. And we have, once again, as our co-host, Amanda Wares. Yes, indeed. Homeschool Helps Director I am in thrilled, the house. thrilled to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. This is always a joy. Good. So today we have our homeschool tip of the week from our very own Matthew yeah. McDill. He's going to talk about how to raise effective Christian leaders. Mm-hmm. So important. And then for our homeschool conversations, we will listen to the second part of Representative Dennis Riddell and his presentation to homeschool families that was at Capitol Fest on April the 5th. And then I will be live with you um, for my Homeschool Helps with Amanda segment. And we are going to talk about an overview of homeschooling approaches. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of we kind of are skipping homeschool news uh, and going straight into homeschool tip of the week. However, there is one important piece of information about this, and that is pre-registration for the conference ends on May 18th. That is this week. So you can still register on site, uh, which in the conference is May 25, 26, and 27 in Winston-Salem at the Benton Convention Center. You can still show up on site, register there, but it's $20 more for most of the tickets. So you just want to take advantage of that and get in at May 18th. I mentioned that because this tip of the week about uh, raising children, um, help growing your children and being Uh, exceptional or effective Christian leaders Mm -hmm. is the workshop topic that one of the workshop topics that I'm going to be giving at the conference. So this is a little uh, sneak preview of that. Um, And I, I want to mention one of the common questions that comes up about the conference. Uh, This is on the frequently asked questions uh, list um, on our conference page. And that is, this is the last question actually, but it says, are all talks Christian based? So that's a common question. Yes. And the answer to that is no. Uh, while many of our talks will contain Christian content, most have information that applies to all homeschoolers. You know, this is an interesting conversation that we have a lot with with our audience, and uh, sure. it goes to a couple of our core values. One is that we serve all homeschoolers. It doesn't matter what you believe, your race, your background, anything. We serve all homeschoolers. At mm-hmm. the same time, we also value biblical Christianity, and we love helping parents um, disciple their kids. And so that's a little right. bit of this of, of of that kind of, of topic that we will have at the conference. And so um, raising exceptional or raising effective Christian leaders. So this comes from Acts 18, verses 24 through 28, which is a story about a guy named Apollos, who is one of the early church leaders. And I'm going to walk through, I'm not going to be able to tell you all of them, but I'm going to walk through and point out a few qualities of Christian leaders that we can instill um, in our kids. <clears throat> so, Uh, Verse 24 says, Now a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. So we already see uh, two things right off the bat there. Uh, One is that Apollos is an effective communicator. He's eloquent. He's able to communicate well. And this is something we talk about quite frequently um, here on the show in the sense of wanting to teach our kids communication skills. Sure. Last time we were at a, when you were on, we were at a speech and debate tournament. And that's one of the things that I do to keep my kids uh, really involved in learning how to communicate well. This is a skill yes. that we want to um, give, give to our kids. So think about being involved in that way. Give them opportunities to communicate. Um, another thing is understanding God's word. It says he was mighty in the scriptures. Uh, or awesome. competent, other other versions say competent in the scriptures, which means someone knows their way around in God's word. They understand the Bible. They understand what it says. And so, obviously, uh, if you are raising your ch- children in that way, you're wanting to make sure that the Bible is a central part of your curriculum, of your home education, and more importantly, of your home, of your conversations. And so just to continue to encourage you, um, in, in, in this context, we're talking about leadership. These... The, you know, Apollos is a leader in the church. And one of the things that we know that's going on right now in our culture is a really big clash of worldviews. Mm. Um, and one of the ways that we can help uh, grow God's kingdom, address some of the really important issues, is to raise our kids who can be leaders, who can have the ability to engage the culture in an effective way. Um, and knowing God's word and being an effective communicator are definitely a part of that. Yeah. Um, 
Look at the next verse. This is verse 25 now. This man had been instructed in the ways of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he knew only the baptism of John. You can probably already see the ones that are sticking out there. Um, Another one here is that he was instructed in the way of the Lord, which means he was discipled. He was taught mm. specifically. So this is this is that part of um, home education is we're putting in that context where we are discipling our kids, not just in do you know the Bible, but do you know him? Do you know the Lord? Yes. Do you know his character, how he works? You know, this is this is something we exemplify. This is something we talk about. What does God think about this? How does God work? And as we look in the Bible, we want to know him personally. Uh, and so and in, in his ways. So this makes it personal, and this is something that we can also do as parents. We see here that uh, he was fervent in spirit, um, and I love the word passion, passionate. Interesting, this isn't a skill. We've really moved to something different here. Mm. Um, and that's a big question. We're going to be talking a lot about this uh, more in the workshop, of course, but one of the questions there is, how do you impart um, passion, you know? Um, that's a heart issue. Yeah, It's not really something that you can just teach as a content. And I think for me, the biggest thing there is example. Right. Um, and that's, it's one thing I've really been thinking a lot about and praying for myself is that my heart is so full and energetic and passionate for Christ and that I love him and that my kids see that. And it just, it just rubs off on them. And they're like, wow, that's, that's what it looks like to really love Jesus and really follow him. And it's not this, well, we know the Bible verses and stuff like that. Sure. Um, so that's kind of on me, you know, mm-hmm. more than how do I impart that? But uh, that's something we, we talk about. Um, so many more things here. Uh, it's somebody who speaks boldly, someone who's teachable. I love that part. Someone who's involved in the local church and serves people who defends the faith. There's so many things in this workshop. We're going to go into some more of them, but I wanted to give you a few of those pieces now so that you could be thinking about that and making sure that that's, that's a part of how you're approaching, um, you know, your home education as well. Wow. All right. So we are now going to go into some home school conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, so last week we, or two weeks ago, we, we heard the first part of a conversation or a talk that uh, Representative Dennis Riddell gave at our uh, Capitol Fest. And at the end, he gave some really great question and answer times. And so we want to share that part of it to you. So let's check out this video. All right. Anybody have a question? Yes, sir. Right here in the red shirt. Uh, My favorite thing to do in Raleigh is always to welcome people from the district. It's just a nice touch of sanity and normalcy here. We live in an artificial bubble here in Raleigh. This is, it's not normal for people to deal with billions of dollars and to decide who gets how much and what's the priority for the spending. So it's a little bit of an artificial existence here in the what I call the bubble of Raleigh. Now, I work with wonderful people. If you could spend a day with me and meet some of my colleagues and we have a uh, morning Bible study, at nine o'clock Monday morning, and it's repeated on Friday through Capital Commission, which is an evangelistic outreach to people in government. If you don't know about them, I'd encourage you to check them out, Capital Commission, if you'd like to support them uh, in ministering to your government officials, that would be great. Uh, we also have a chapel service every Wednesday from 1230. That's usually led by members, House members and Senate members. And then we also are in the process, I think, of resurrecting our legislative uh, prayer group, prayer caucus. So you would be amazed, uh, just the core of really godly men and women that I get to work with. You would be very encouraged and you would uh, be pleased with them. And, you know, other members of the House and Senate maybe don't share my uh, particular Christian faith. Uh, I've made some very good friendships with them across the aisle and within the Republican caucus. There are a lot of good people. They maybe not might not dot their I's and cross their T's the way you and I do, but they are good people. And I really don't know of anyone who is down here in Raleigh who is not working for what they think is the improvement of the state of North Carolina. Okay. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Well, I always had an interest in government. 
for some strange reason, I was one of those odd eight-year-olds that went out and passed out literature for Ronald Reagan when he was running for governor of California. Believe it or not. Uh, some people call it an illness. I call it an interest. Okay. And we have been involved for, my goodness, we moved up here and from South Carolina in 1985. I made contact with the local Republican Party that same year, and we've been involved ever since. And uh, there's a lot of attrition in local political effort. People come in short time, I call them comets, because they're here, and they, they streak across the sky, and then in after three years or four years, because it, it didn't deliver whatever they were anticipating. Well, you can't be in this for delivering. You've got to be in this for serving. That's what we do. And we had served for many, many years, just helping other people get elected. And the opportunity was just dropped into our lap, as I said, in 2010, 2011. Uh, we prayed about it. Uh, we had a family uh, week at the beach plan. And we just talked about it with our kids. And uh, I think I remember one of them saying, well, Dad, you might as well do what you've been doing for 20 years and get paid for it. So uh, that was their conclusion of the matter. So I didn't. Imagine myself doing this at your age, but I am blessed and delighted to be able to do what we're doing right now. I think we have changed North Carolina for the good. The last decade in North Carolina, our state has taken a turnabout. And we are a sought after destination where before we owed $2.7 billion to the federal government. I don't know how you borrow money from a creature that is itself in debt but North Carolina had borrowed $2.7 billion to, from the federal government to support the unemployment program here, and there was no plan to pay it off. We had a $2 billion deficit in the state budget left over by the previous administration with no plan to pay it off. And what we have now is North Carolina that is considered the number one state for business. North Carolina has one of the lowest tax rates in the Southeast. And you see that, you should see that in your wallet. You're getting another tax deduction this year. So that'll be my, more money in your pocket, which is where I believe it needs to stay as much as possible. Other questions? Yes, ma'am? Uh, you spend a lot of time reading. You spend a lot of time in meetings with constituents. And again, this is the best part of our day. Uh, for Polly and I, it's when people from back in the district come to home. They come to visit. And just bring again that, that touch that there is a world outside of the bubble of Raleigh that's really important. And what happens in Raleigh is not the most important thing. It's what's happening in your family. What's happening with your children's education. You know, how can we expand school choice even further to give parents more authority and more opportunities and more choices in what you do for your child's education? We believe you are the experts in your child's education, not me not somebody else in a bureaucrat position in Raleigh. It's you, and we need to listen to you. But uh, that's still, it's a privilege to be able to serve. I don't uh, rue any part about what we're doing. God has given us this opportunity. We want to make sure that we deliver the most that we can for his kingdom in the time we are here to do things that honor the Lord, but then also benefit our neighbors and a true expression of loving your neighbor. Other questions? Yes. Yeah. Why did you guys choose to homeschool? Why did we choose to homeschool? Both my wife and I, we came up here to Alamance County to teach at Alamance Christian School back in 1985. Uh, but we came here to take that teaching position and uh, loved it. We were teaching, enjoying it. Uh, Polly was a PE teacher and librarian, and I was uh, mostly history, government, you, uh, economics. And I was in love with the librarian, which was also my wife there. Um, we came to a crossroads with the school because uh, when our youngest daughter became of uh, home uh, school age, five, or five years old, uh, we didn't want to drive 20 minutes into the school and 20 minutes back. We had several children at the time. It would mean Polly stopping what she was doing and coming into the school. I'd pick up the child and then I'd go home. So we asked if we could just take the year off, the first year in homeschool, and uh, the school board a little reluctantly approved. Uh, so we kind of backed into a little bit of homeschooling and loved it. My wife was superb at it. 
And the next year, when the daughter was supposed to go in first grade, uh, I asked the school board for permission to continue homeschooling because they had a rule that said if you're more employed at the school, then your children had to be in the school. All right. uh, they, they turned us down. They said no. So uh, I wrote them a very lengthy letter, explained the benefits that we were experiencing as a family, and they still said no. And uh, I asked for an opportunity to speak to the board. They said no. And they said, you're either going to teach here or you're going to not teach here if your kids don't go to school, which was a very easy decision to make. Nobody has the right to tell a parent where your children go to school. I don't care if it comes under a, a veil of Christian authority or governmental authority. You get to decide where your child goes to school, for example. All right, we had a great Capital Fest. I can't wait to share uh, some of the other presentations and interviews we got there coming up yeah. over the next few weeks. Um, I really appreciate Dennis Riddell and his service and his heart. Really amazing what he's doing there. So um, I hope you will uh, share that also with some others who would be interested. We are here. Homeschool helps with Amanda. What do we have today? That's right. Today we are going to start with an overview of homeschool approaches. And in the coming weeks, we are gonna be doing more of a deep dive into each one of okay. those homeschool approaches. But right. today is just an what overview. Okay. So first off, you may be thinking there are different approaches to homeschooling. Yeah. What? But yes, there definitely are. And some kind of overlap and some are vastly different. Okay. But the beautiful thing about homeschooling is you can figure it out. You can figure out what approach resonates with you and what works for you and your students. And then you base your homeschool around that. Now, if you do any kind of research at all, there are numerous books, blog posts, mm -hmm. magazine articles about these. Um, and you also you may see some additional approaches that are on different lists. Um, but these that I'm going to go over are the main, considered the main ones. Mm -hmm. Now, note, I am not talking about learning styles. That is a whole other video. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's a whole other conversation. I am not talking about teaching styles either. Um, and today, I am not going to mention specific curriculum that may fall under each method either. So, deep dive is coming. Today is just an overview. Okay. All right, so first off, we have the traditional method of homeschooling. Now, this is probably what you and I think of when we think of school. Mm -hmm. It's probably how most of us were educated. You have textbooks or maybe workbooks. Um, there are tests and quizzes. It is probably parent or teacher led. It is usually grade level specific. Um, you may hear it called school at home. So this is like public school holdovers in some ways or not? Sometimes yes and sometimes no. Okay. But it's definitely more of what we're used to when we mm -hmm. think of school. You have your workbook, you have your textbook, you take in the content and you do work, homework or Fill school work. Workbook. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. To answer to that. It's more of what we are used to. It's a lot of times when people start homeschooling, um, that's what they go to because Start that's what with. they're comfortable with. That's what they think of when they think of school. Um, my husband has told me that when we first started talking about homeschooling, he really thought he had a picture in his mind of me standing up in front of our kids yeah. with a blackboard and a American flag, a flag and right. the whole yeah. thing. So you don't have that's to. That's not what happened. That is not what happened. Okay, okay. No, certainly not. But that's what he thought of, what he thought of right. what homeschooling was. But anyway, so traditional, the traditional approach to homeschooling, you're going to have some form of textbooks or workbooks. You, the teacher, parent, are going to lead the homeschooling. Mm -hmm. So that's traditional. Now, next, you have classical, the classical approach to homeschooling. Classical learning is just that. It is based on a classical theory that was actually developed in the Middle Ages. Um, it's a, a theory of education and development. So the classical approach has the goal, overall goal, of teaching children to think for themselves. 
So they use this model called the trivium. You may hear the trivium mm -hmm. model. Children move through three main stages of learning. So you have the concrete learning, which is the grammar stage. And the focus of learning there mm -hmm. is on repetition and memorization. You'll hear a lot about that. Then you have, and that's roughly elementary school. Mm -hmm. Then you have um, the critical learning stage, which is the logic stage. Mm -hmm. This is roughly middle school. When the student begins to develop analytical thinking skills mm -hmm. and starts to learn the why behind things. Right. And then you have abstract learning, which is the rhetoric stage, mm -hmm. roughly high school. When the student is now focused on communicating about all those ideas that they've learned in those other stages and thought critically about. So that's a pretty simplistic explanation of the classical method, but in a couple weeks, I will go into yeah, more detail. It's a good overview. Mm -hmm. It is. It is a language focused, it's a literature focused style of learning. It's been adopted by many homeschooling families. So it's a common method out there. Next, we have the Charlotte Mason mm -hmm. method. Charlotte Mason was a British author, teacher, and lecturer in the late 1800s. Um, the Charlotte Mason method includes an abundant use of literature, mm -hmm. narrative literature, plenty of time spent outdoors exploring, um, the development of an appreciation for art, music, and nature. You might um, hear Charlotte Mason educators talking about journaling, narration, dictation, mm -hmm. copy work. Those are all ideas that you will hear about when you hear about Charlotte Mason. Some other ideas included in the Charlotte Mason method are short lessons, um, twaddle. You will definitely hear that word. The dumbing down of education is something that Miss Mason heavily advocated against. So living books are highly encouraged and heavily depended on. Um, there's also a strong emphasis on developing good habits. So that's an overview of Charlotte Mason. Then you have unschooling. This okay. is a method. So not to be confused with de-schooling, but unschooling is a okay. method. Wow. It's a style of home education that allows the student's interest and curiosities to drive the path of learning. Now, instead of using a defined curriculum, unschoolers tend to be child-led or interest-led. They trust that these children will gain their knowledge organically. Now, it is an active learning process. It's not just, hey kids, go do whatever you want, play video games all day. No, it really is a method. Um, unschoolers are homeschoolers who are focused more on the experimental process of learning and becoming educated rather than doing school. So that the unschooled child probably is following their interests and it could be dictated by their their learning style, their personality type. It's really mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. yeah. So then you have the unit study method. Okay. One of my favorites. Um, it is a mastery based approach to learning where you incorporate multiple subject areas to learn about a specific theme or topic. Okay. Sometimes they're called thematic units. These studies often involve multi-sensory learning, where each activity is organized according to the thematic idea. So maybe you're learning about Abraham Lincoln, and you might do some math to calculate how old Abraham Lincoln was when he did something. Yeah. Or obviously you're learning history, and you can write, which covers English, and so many things. Hmm. You can do these unit studies and learn about one theme, but you're covering all the different okay. subjects. Yeah. Then we have Montessori. So Maria Montessori was a medical doctor and an Italian educator in the late 19th and early 20th century. She focused her intention on how young children learn. So some of the characteristics of the Montessori method are mixed age classrooms, hands-on learning, cooperation, collaboration, active learning, um, freedom of children to choose between learning activities or work, mm -hmm. okay? So all of these methods, then there is the eclectic 
method. This is where a lot of us Throw wind up. Together, huh? Mixing and matching from several of these methods to figure out what works best for our family or your individual child. So that can be intimidating at first. But um, honestly, I usually recommend families that are just starting out, try one approach at a time mm-hmm. to really see what's a good fit. But it's important to know that if certain aspects of several of these approaches appeal to you, you are definitely not alone. So tune in in the next few weeks for a deep dive into all those approaches. And so would you say also that over time you get better at eclectic kind of putting things together as you get to know the different stuff, right? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for that. That's a helpful uh, jump start. Yes. Really glad that you joined us again today. Uh, We'd love to hear from you. If you have questions or topics, things you'd like us to talk about, you can email us at thehomeschoolshow at Mm nche.com. You can learn more about uh, how to subscribe or follow or share these episodes by going to uh, our website, nche.com slash thehomeschoolshow. And so if uh, this has been encouraging to you and you'd like to share it with other people, we'd love for you to do that and uh, know how best to do that. So until next week, continue to homeschool with confidence and joy. Bye-bye.